Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us. We're at VMworld 2015, and one of the things you're going to be hearing a lot coming out of VMworld, and certainly in the uh, rest of the year and year to come, is containers and container technology like Docker. Well, how does that play into the whole virtualization game? To help with that conversation, I've asked Rob Whiteley, he's the Vice President of Marketing at Hedvig, to join us on the whiteboard. Rob, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So before we jump into this, tell us a little bit about Hedvig. So Hedvig is a software-defined storage platform, and we're really targeting a lot of the net new workloads like containers and providing storage for them. Okay, well let's jump right in there. What's the difference between a container and a virtual machine? Sure, and there's lots of tutorials online. I'm just going to give you a very basic one for the context of storage. So if you think of a virtual machine, it's really about how do I contain an application and all of its necessary components so it can run on my virtual infrastructure. And so the key difference here is you're going to have your guest OS tied in with the binaries and libraries to run that app. Okay? Okay. If we move over to the container side quickly, really the container is just this portion. And what you can see here is the application, its necessary binaries and libraries are here, but I don't have to do the guest OS. Right. So it's a little bit lighter weight. Now, to make the analogy here, you can think of a hypervisor as like the Docker engine, that's what does all the orchestration, does all the infrastructure for you, but as a result, I have much less overhead and I can spin these up faster, they perform more. Quickly. Now, is this an either-or situation? No. In fact, one of the things that we think is going to happen, especially in the enterprise data center, is it's really going to be an and situation. You're going to have VMs and containers. Containers are really for speed and flexibility. They're for new workloads where you're really trying to worry about how quickly can I deploy these. VMs are for more of your core applications and really how do I m maximize for manageability. Okay, so this is really maximizing my current infrastructure, current data center, this is kind of more forward looking. Exactly, and okay. so we think for your average enterprise it's going to be a blend of the two, and as you know, I mean, they're still mainframes. These things never completely wind down. True, true. So what's next on this? So let's just double click on containers for a second. So what I've shown here is, imagine you have one host running a container, and in an enterprise data center in a production environment, you're going to want to move that around, right? Okay. And so if I try to migrate that over to a different host, I have a problem, especially if I'm trying to run stateful applications, which is much more common in the enterprise. As you so know. now, when you say stateful, just so everybody knows, stateful is if, if I get rid of a virtual machine, or a, in this case a container, I still have access to the data. In the Docker world, the, that concept is you don't by default get a stateful in, in, instance, correct? Exactly. And I think where containers grew up were in web applications where that state didn't matter so much. I just right. spun up, I transacted, and I wiped it away. Yep. In the enterprise data center, that's not true. Right. So as I migrate these containers, what I worry about is how do I make sure that the underlying data actually has access to it? So imagine now you want Hedvig as your underlying storage from this. And so the challenge is if I'm going to carve up a storage asset, okay, it's easy to connect it to one container, but as I move this container over, how does this container know to get to its underlying stateful sure. data? And what's interesting is out of this comes a company called Cluster HQ. Okay. Right? And we teamed up with them and they have their product called Flocker. And Flocker is basically a container data management solution. Okay. Its sole job in life is to say, take this volume that was mapped to this container, and as the container moves over or I spin up a new instance of it, I automatically do all that connective tissue, that mapping. And so what you get is Flocker is speaking northbound, if you will, and we are speaking down to there. So you don't have to worry about taking the storage asset and moving it along. Flocker does all of that for you. And so part of the complement of your guys' flexibility in your own software development is how quickly you were able to integrate into something like a Flocker, right? Yeah, and what we found is that this is a very fast-moving world, and Flocker does a great job of staying on top of it. We as a storage provider just want to know how do we take all of the enterprise class feature set and make it relevant for a container world, and Flocker helps us do that quickly. So why does enterprise class features remain uh, so critical here? Yeah, so in this world where I'm now thinking about doing storage for my container environment, as we mentioned before, my VMs don't go away. And so one of the things we're focused on here at Hedvig is how do I get a storage platform that can actually span both environments, right? So it's just as good for my core applications, mm -hmm. my virtualized applications, as is these new services, right? And to do that, we think there's actually three things that you're trying to solve for. The first is scale, right? And so we've built ours on a distributed systems engine. Docker is a distributed systems engine. Mm -hmm. So the idea is your underlying storage is built with the same architectural principles as the compute and application tier above it. If I want to spin up instances quickly, I should be able to spin up storage quickly. It's a core attribute of software-defined storage, as you know. And, and parallelism is, is critical here too, correct? 
Yes, and one of the things that's critical is how do I take some of these more advanced data services, right? And this is, as anyone who's been in an enterprise data center knows, I need snaps and clones in order sure. to do data management. I might need compression and dedupe. All of these features we've had in the hardware-defined world ported over the software. To your point, the reason why we can do those is we can parallelize that across all the nodes right. and kind of harness the power of that cluster in order to do very complex features in software. Okay, great. So now you've got scale, you've got data services. The third and most important one, we think, then, is to have very granular policies. And the reason why that matters is in a VM world, this matters in that a VDI is going to be completely different than some sort of exchange server or something sure. like that. Right. And so I might need to apply different data services. Well, containers take that to a whole nother degree because now I'm decomposing an application into a ton of different microservices. Right. Each microservice may need its own unique storage services. And so to be able to do that, we've developed an engine that allows us to have a per VM or per container level of granularity. Each one of these data services can have its own unique replication, its own unique DR, its own unique dedupe compression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, and that becomes critical in this environment because we could have thousands of these containers versus maybe a few hundred virtual machines. Right, right. so yeah. the scale gives you the ability to spin up fast enough. Right. These last two give it the production quality because again, if I'm trying to run containers in production and I need those stateful applications, I can't just ignore 20 years of data center best practices. That's not going to work. I have to be able to apply the old to the new. And it, you know, I think this works out well because now you're talking about the, you know, we could start where the bulk of the data is today and with an eye toward the future and start building these applications with the same platform and not have to go buy yet another storage system. Exactly. Right? For us, it's all about eliminating islands of storage underneath. If you have to stand up a new infrastructure, and by the way, it could be Hadoop, it could be whatever, I don't want to deploy yet another storage solution for that. Instead, I want to tailor my storage solution for that environment, and that's really where you get any kind of operationals. So there you have it. You can solve the current problems in the virtualized environment with an eye toward the future on containers and how you can take advantage of those with a single system. And that's going to be critical because you don't want to have to keep spinning up new storage systems every time a new technology comes available. So that flexibility is really critical in addressing these new challenges. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>